Well today we're going to have a look at Crunk Do, which is sitting up in Kirkmichael Hills, at the bottom of the valley there. The river running down below is called the Do, or well, runs into the Do. It's inhabited up until the 50s. It's a lovely little aspect. Have a look at an old ruin. It's, a, it's a, one of my favourites. Well, they're all my favourites, but they've all got bits I enjoy. Distance between um, just past Kirk Michael on the road to Douglas, the Bagaro Road. It's farmed for many years in the 50s by a fellow called Mike Webster. And this is the main road in, or one of the main roads in. This is the East Road and there's a West Road. And I wonder how many times this little path's been walked over the years by people coming home after a hard day's work or going out and walking, they would be. What is it about people in their rush? Why can't they take it home with them? You know, they come out for a picnic, enjoy it, and they chuck it over the hedge. No wonder farmers and people get annoyed and fed up with the whole situation. It's just as easy to take it in your car, recycle it. Why leave it in the countryside for everybody else to pick up? It just annoys me intensely. It's a decent track in, not too arduous. <laughs> Obviously there's been a bit of an accident here somewhere. Not going to leave them rubbish, they'll even get their car out. So this is the, uh, so they start the main track in. 70 acres it was probably in its heyday. Love the aspect. Nicely laid out fields, all well fenced by the Creer family. Sheep farm these days, but in its heyday it would have been a mixed farm. So this is Crunk Do, nestling in the hillside or in the valley. Very sheltered little spot, with the usual trees around it. I'll have to see what else is in it. I've been here for a few years. Used to be um, used by the King Longlands College as a summer retreat. As I said, Mike Webbs have farmed it here for many years. It's now just a pure sheep farm. But I'm sure there'll be um, some delights to discover. So come with me and Penny while we investigate. Here we are. Oh, a little five egg. They always were here. And a flushing toilets those days. No running water, just the stream you can hear in the distance. Well, it looks a well kept house, been re roofed at one time anyway. I think the first thing to investigate is the Little toilet. Class as the thigh veg, they say. This is it. Out the front door. 
down the steps, rain or snow. And you'd uh, to take your seat in here. Seat's gone. Still got a roof on it though. And my job in the summertime, when I was a kid, was to clean ours out. And there's nothing worse than human poo, I can assure you. It's a lovely aspect down around here. Today it's nice, it's sheltered too. Various trees planted. There'll be hawthorns here and ash trees. I wonder whether this spot here would have been the well. It looks a bit filled in. They always had to have wells for water, obviously. Stone to build them. And shelter for the weather. A few buildings left on this one. I'm assuming this would be the cow house coming up to it here. Or buyer, depending on who you are. Door always facing out to the to the world. Still bits of wood lying around. It's amazing how quick nature takes over though. Have a walk inside, see what she's like. always the sheep bucket. I use these myself with my sheep. They love the stuff with fish, in, fish oil in it. Yeah this looks like some sort of, I'm guessing it would be the flashing shed because there's a mill here somewhere. Well built still, still here and there's no cement much in these walls. Just man's ability to do with what was there. So this is the view we get in the morning when you're cleaning cows out. And you'd be barrowing the muck out to the store, down through the field here, to the Hackett and into the Midden, which will be just to the left, I'm guessing. It'll be stored there then for the uh, springtime and put on the, under the potatoes. So what I really came to see, because I read about this and I'd forgotten it was here virtually. This was totally about the threshing mill. These big cogs were actually geared to drive the machine which was in the shed here. And um, there'd be a big pole sticking over this. Then a horse or two would be attached to the pole and would drag it around. And um, the walk around is what they call a horse walk. Just like so really. Quite amazing so many of these farms had these little machines. A lot of them came from here in Scotland. Only 40, 150 pounds in the 1880s or 1860s I should say. I don't know where they got the money to buy them. Huh? It's a mystery. Um, oat would have been the thing they thrashed up here. Because in those days horses were everywhere. They'd have to be fed. The house too is a uh, Grand affair, with an extension on the back as well, and a cart shed at the side. It's the way the stones are laid over the doorway. Could we do it these days? I don't know whether we could or not. A 
in front of us there is the other road out that went out towards Kirkmichael. That would be the uh, west road in. And the one we came down was the east road in. Don't forget it's pulling trap days. It's not tractors and cars and vans and quads. So it had to be able to get up and turn or get up without being too steep. So now we're entering the house from the front door. It must be the posh place this one. It's got a uh, porch. Quite dark. Sheep poo everywhere. A fireplace. People have obviously been here at one time. Not anymore. One would be a kitchen and one would be the living room. Sheep poo everywhere, as you can see. Stairs in the middle of these little houses, they always were. And you went up carefully. So I don't know how bad they are. Still got some of the old uh, furniture in it. Intact. What do you think, Penny? Penny's not sure. Definitely believe this not long ago it was lived in, albeit briefly. Would have been a family, would have supported a whole family. Days gone by, days gone by. From Brandywell, goes down past Little London, and I imagine eventually it's going to end up at Gondabalig Bridge, I think. I can avoid falling in. I have a slippery. Oops. So I said it's very slippery. Come here, Penske. Well, that was a quick trip around Kronk Do. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's stick some, um, oh, some, stick some still pictures on it because they would be better for the house in the video, but it's just nice to do the video. And I love the sounds of the countryside this time of year. You can hear the water running. There's a chuff behind me somewhere. Little birds. It's very still today. Coming towards the end of January 2020. Be a nice sort of project for this next few months, I think. Take a few of these old Thaltons. I like this one, it's one of my favourites. So it is called Conk Do. There's a little place down over the hill behind me, or not behind me, in front of me, which is called the Out Place. And uh, there's not much of that left, but there's people with memories off ploughing it and sowing turnips and potatoes there. They used to call the out place, although it's probably more to be some relation to this place, a crunk do more or a lower crunk do or something like that. But um, it is an absolute joy to be out again. It's just delightful. I'm sitting here absorbing the atmosphere. I'm sitting on, I definitely think it what is the well or what was the well. It's well thought of a place with its toilet there, well here, sheltered from most of the wind, trees around it. You've been a garden somewhere too. All your land was around you. Yes, you know, so I think if you lived here, you'd have been better than lots of places. Anyway, Penny and I are off home, a cup of tea, 